Now you'll learn from an internationally recognized expert in cancer immunotherapy and pancreatic cancer. She's also the chair of President Joe Biden's cancer panel. Dr. Elizabeth Jaffe is a researcher, medical oncologist, and professor with extensive experience in the development of cancer immunotherapies, specifically in vaccines for breast and pancreatic tumors. Dr. Jaffe is the deputy director of the Sidney Kimmel Comprehensive Cancer Center at John Hopkins University. She's also an associate director of CRI's Scientific Advisory Council. Let's hear now how she fills us in on pancreatic cancer and immunotherapy. Thank you for inviting me to be here today. I'm excited to talk to you about some of the great progress in immunotherapy for a disease that's um, something I'm very passionate about, pancreatic cancer, but also about the field in general and where we're going. It's, it's really an exciting time, and I hope to communicate this to all of you. As many people know, pancreatic cancer is currently the third leading cause of cancer deaths in the United States following colon cancer um, and lung cancer. It's, it's one of the few cancers where its incidence continues to rise. We don't know why. We think maybe some of it is environmental, some genetic, but also we just don't have great treatments for it yet. So the incidence currently is about 60,000 Americans a year. Now, the good news is the mortality is no longer equal to the incidence, although it's still high. It's at about 51,000 a year. About 12% of patients live five years or longer. Now, this doesn't sound great, and it isn't, but I do have to say that when I first started in this field about three decades ago, only about 3% of patients made it five years out. So where is the progress so far? So the progress so far has been with mul multiple chemotherapies, so a combination chemotherapy regimen that uh, we give in patients who can have their pancreas removed uh, to get rid of the cancer, no evidence of cancer, and then we give chemotherapy to try to kill anything that might be microscopic. However, immunotherapy is starting to have some benefit in this disease. So what, what are the issues with pancreatic cancer and the immune system? Well, in cancers that respond to the agents that are now approved, such as anti-PD-1, you may have heard of Keytruda um, as one example, um, or Aptiva. Well, those agents, what they do is they basically take a T cell that already sees the cancer. So in some patient cancers like melanoma and lung cancer, they're able to alert the immune system that they're there and they get these T cells. T cells are the killer cells that can recognize cancer and actually give a signal that kills the cancer. So these agents that have been developed that are just really almost miracle agents for some patients, these agents basically allow the T cell to get into the cancer and kill it because there are forces that surround a cancer cell within tissue. Um, if you look at a lung cancer, the lung would be, there's normal tissue surrounding the cancer that's growing. That T cell can get in, but sometimes gets turned off. Well, these agents are able to keep them turned on so they can kill a cancer. Well, pancreatic cancer has a bigger challenge. Pancreatic cancer has no T cells. The pancreatic cancer that's growing in the pancreas is able to surround itself by a very complex set of normal cells, normal cells that would be in the pancreas, that now the, can that the cancer cells are able to co-opt. It basically gets these normal cells to protect it. It forms a barrier around the tumor. And unlike in lung cancer or melanoma, because there are no T cells that can even see the cancer, when we give these agents like Keytruda, it does nothing for pancreatic cancer. So we've been um, for many years thinking, well, the first problem we have to address is getting a good T cell. Once you get a good T cell induced that can see the cancer, then maybe it can get into the pancreas. So we've been testing vaccines for pancreatic cancer. And I've been doing this for three decades. And we're able, um, we know, we're able to get T cells to be induced because we could actually take some blood from a patient, see those T cells after we give the vaccine. And more recently, when we get a biopsy of the tumor, we can see T cells coming in. But they're getting turned off. And they're getting turned off by more than just one signal. Okay, so PD-1 blocking antibodies, Keytruda, Optiva, they turn off one signal on, they turn off one signal on the T cell that's a stop signal. 
Well, for pancreatic cancer, there's multiple signals that are stopping the T cell from killing the cancer. These other signals are provided by the normal cells that are helping the cancer grow. I'll give you an, an analogy. So I like to use a tree as an analogy. There's the bark around the uh, pulp in the tree. The pulp in the tree is really a conduit that brings nutrition from the roots to the leaves. The bark protects that so that the nutrition can come. Now, the nutrition, of course, isn't a cancer. It's helpful. But what the cancer does in pancreatic cancer is it says, I need to have as much nutrition as possible, so I'm going to get the normal cells to act like a, a bark. And so that's what happens. So getting those T cells in through that bark is a big challenge. And so we've been looking at this from the point of view of what are those signals. And now with all of the new technologies that we have to be able to really take a look at that bark around the tumor, we're able to dissect out many signals. And so for pancreatic cancer, we've been giving a vaccine that gets a good T cell induced. And then we come in with more than one type of immune agent, so not just anti-PD-1, but some other agents that can also take care of those other inhibitory signals that form the bark. And we're getting T cells in, and in some patients, we are seeing responses. So how do you make a good T cell? Well, we've been making a good T cell using vaccines. Originally, we didn't know what the uh, proteins were in pancreatic cancer that were abnormal, but now we do. We're starting to better understand because our technologies are allowing us to understand. And there's been some nice studies in pancreatic cancer done by other groups as well, a group at Memorial Sloan Kettering where they've actually taken a piece of tumor from the patient they have done this in-depth sequencing to understand multiple new proteins in the cancer, and then they made a vaccine. In fact, they used the mRNA vaccine, which we learned about through COVID. That's been a big success targeting viral antigens, such as the COVID antigens. So they've been able to use these um, uh, mRNA vaccines and just modify them to express proteins that are seen by pancreatic cancer. And they have done this in the setting of giving it after a patient's tumor is removed. They don't see the cancer, but we know it's going to come back. And they give a vaccine as kind of an insurance policy to prevent recurrence. And at small studies, they're looking very optimistic. So I'm very hopeful. I think that we have learned a lot. We still need to learn more about that bark. What, if, what are all of those cells that are surround and proteins surrounding the tumor that are protecting it from C from the immune system getting in. Well, it, we're really in a um, unprecedented time in biomedical research in general. We have new technologies that have really been able to help us understand cancers at the single cell or molecular level. This is different than even I'd say seven or eight years ago. So we've made a lot of progress in trying to understand what all of those signals are, and it's a complex network that is trying to prevent the immune system from seeing cancer. But we're finally dissecting those signals, and we're developing new agents that can intercept those signals. And so I'm very, very hopeful that in the next five to 10 years, we're going to have new therapies for pancreatic cancer, and we're going to turn pancreatic cancer into a chronic disease before we know it. And I'm very excited about this so that we're no longer going to be saying, you know what, we've made some progress. 12% of patients live five years. I want to say, say that 80 or 90 or even 100% of patients are living five years. So keep watching because I do believe for the first time, I am totally optimistic that we are going to have great progress using the immune system to fight pancreatic cancer.